Hey, ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Comp Ulrich coming to you with a 2v2 today from Steel Division Normandy 44. Now, this will be a kind of an interesting matchup because on this map, Comment les Evente, although I'm sorry the French people out there are going to tell me I'm saying it horribly wrong, but Comment les Evente, we're going to have the allies KU2521 or KU2521 playing as the first Pachanerna and his ally Hicksoff81 playing as his second Blinde. So I expect to see a lot of early vehicles coming out from our allied forces here and matching up against them, which makes this really, really interesting to me, is Arcadian playing as a 716th Infantry Division and Munster 76 as the 3rd Falschim Jaegers. Now, the uh, early game, I would say, for the allies is going to be much, much easier if they, if they bring in any sort of vehicles whatsoever. We are seeing a lot of these Polish troops just stacking up over here on this left arterial. Um, and they have to watch out, because as you move forward into this field, there's some great kind of choke points to place AT guns, maybe back over here, across the road, trying to lock down the center position. And you really have to watch out for this main road right here. If you can take this crossroads, I mean, it's not too bad. But the trees on the other side make that a death trap in many cases for vehicles. Uh, meanwhile, over here on the French side of things, I say French just because of where they're in... Ooh, no, never mind. I was going to say where they initially are setting up. Okay, no, we are we are seeing a lot of just other material over here, aren't we? Uh, Hicksoff, yes, Hicksoff. Why am I not seeing Hicksoff? Hmm. Oh, okay. Oops. Um, we are going to see a lot of earlier, I would say, kind of light tanks, as is the way for the second Blinde, having a Stuart coming on in as well as a Cromwell. So some really good light tanks that are going to be able to really push this early position against the Germans. Now, the Germans, for their own particular push, uh, it seems like we have Arcadian over here on the German left, and he's going rather scanty here. He's got a couple of recon. He's bringing in now some AA. Going to be an interesting idea there. Well, Munster, well, Munster's bringing in a couple of pop gun, anti-tank guns, and tons of infantry. Now, looking at the map itself... I'm expecting to see a great amount of fighting, of course, along the center half of the map, but I feel like whoever, if the Germans can control this wooded area right here and plop down some AT guns, whether on the edge of it or maybe on this particular position here, we could see some really, really interesting early fighting. But we are off, and it looks like the Poles are making a mad dash up to take out that forested area. Uh, next, then, the blind... Whoa, what the heck? Hicksoff is sending a jeep on a suicide mission back to the uh, rear of the German lines. Also looking to see some very, very aggressive AT positions here. Recon, one going up, one going up to the center side. Um, meanwhile, conservative breakout looks further over here on the allied right. And that's probably a good decision, all things considered. Now, Germans, what are the Germans looking to do? Well, we are going to see a lot of Arcadians men kind of being, again, just very, very conservative. I'm surprised by that, really. Um... Now, I guess my question is, where is this AT gun coming out? Okay, he's popping up right between those trees. So, like I said, if you can lock down those forests, it could be an excellent position. And we're also going to see a very early Henkel uh, 129 coming on out. Now, the question is whether or not Munster can very quickly turn it into an, a viable attack. Because as of right now, I'm not sure that he can. Uh... Right, enemy contact has made. The hurricane is out on the map as well. So, uh, the German AA is sponsored over here by Arcadians on the left-hand side. And here we're going to see the, take the first couple of bits of fire. No, we're not. Instead, it's just going to be all this infantry, all these light vehicles pouring on in. And I have to tell you, I'm a little bit nervous uh, for the Germans right now. Let's see if I can kind of turn this a little bit. Because it looks like we're going to have two kind of consistent fronts. Uh, just this massive fight over here to the left-hand side over a rather open area, more, more or less. Except for a couple of stands of trees. And over here on the opposite side, where we have just a lot of close and disgustingly deep fighting. Now, the Jaegers are here. They already have two shots out. They took out a half-track. Okay, that Henkel has also taken out that Steward, so well done there. And the Hurricane, I think, is making a run in after it. So here it comes. Yep, that Henkel is probably not going to make it out too easily. Although, we are seeing some nice ground fire coming on up. Is that going to be enough? The Henkel might be able to limp off the battlefield. I have to know. I have to know, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, 51 to 49 in favor of the Germans. Mostly because 
the Allies have not put any investment into this area here. In the meantime, we are going to see a consist. Oh, okay, that's why. I was saying 88 is just going to lock down this entire position here. Um, unfortunately, not a great spot for it if it's trying to be an anti-tank platform. But then again, earlier on, there's enough, I would say, infantry here, enough anti-tank that um, the tanks can be at least delayed, if nothing else. And it does seem that these Fusiliers have been found out, so that's a, big, a bit of a problem there. In the meantime, we are going to find ourselves in a kind of a very committed battlefield here. Uh, although, the Poles are pushing on forward. They have themselves... Oh no, I, I had this completely backwards. I'm so sorry, folks. Poles over here on the right-hand side. French over here on the left. And it looks like Hicksoff is just putting down a bunch of mortar fire right against these few, um, Fusiliers. And uh, these guys aren't going to last very long. They do have this pack just behind it, though. It's going to be interesting to see how well that does, but it's going to be super, super close against the enemy, and any second it's going to just get shot to pieces, I kind of feel like. There we go, and it's gone. But a huge push is coming in from Arcadian and a 716. You can see it right now, tons of infantry pouring in to stabilize this position on the map. But despite the fact that the Allies have been able to shove... A heck of a lot further in than I expected. Um, the Germans seem to have the things not well under control, but at least decently. Arcadian, in the meantime, bringing on forwards this kind of awkward-looking Panzer B2. Now, let's remember, the 716th has next to no legitimate ar um, armor. It has some, but it's just it's kind of garbage. And frankly, as the game moves on, later and later, they have to really depend more on anti-tank assets... So to me, honestly, that's, I think that's what really drew me about this game, is the fact that, looking at this, we have really two infantry-based kind of divisions, one with a little more mobility and more air power, perhaps, uh, but facing off against two other divisions that are historically, or, or also really in this game as well, very armored-focused, at least early on. I'm sure somebody out there is going to yell at me for saying that, but it, it's really a heck of a lot more uh, armor than you're going to see out of either of these German divisions. But a light panzer coming on in, taking out a half-track, swinging in and around. The question is, will these Voltigeers snipe him out or not? We're just going to see in the meantime a, a DB-7B coming on in to toss down some smoke. Does not do so. Instead, just kind of hangs out over the map. And with this whole M2HB, I think that's sitting there and just kind of an air defense platform. Not too sure why he's being so interested in that. Interesting air positioning over there from the Poles. From the French. I'm going to do that all game, folks. I'm sorry. Meantime, a lot more coming on. And crew killed. Thank you so much, Pack. Uh, I took one shot and took out that half-track pretty easily here. Uh, Mortar's going to turn on and try to immediately put fire on top of that platform. And we'll probably stress it out pretty easily. Meanwhile, over here on the German left, the Allied right, we've just seen tons and tons of guys going to meat grinder. And I'm surprised... But neither player is really trying to knife up the middle and kind of do the whole Napoleon thing. Maybe split their opponents in two. Now, it would be a heck of a lot easier, I would think, for the French and the Poles. If I wouldn't push the pa put it past the French, excuse me, the Germans, to do this a similar attack at some point. But more smoke coming on in? No, this guy's just hanging out over here, over the map. I'm not entirely sure why that's been such a focus for the French here. We are going to phase B in about three and a half minutes, and the Germans do have a 300 ticket advantage. Not that much, mind you, but okay, we're also having a sexton over here dropping around, stop on that 88 millimeter. And it looks like just maybe we're going to see a slight push from the Poles? No, not, not overly much, though. Um, but no, going to phase B, I think we're going to continue to see a German lead here. Now, these Fusilier Führers, uh, they could get in and after that particular half-track, but it's going to be practically a suicide mission. And also worth noting here that this L6 Panzer has done enough damage to really push back the front lines. And while we are going to see these Fusiliers and this Machine Gewehr cut on off, I get the feeling that if he really, really wanted to, he could slip in behind him and put some good fire down onto that half-track. The pocket's getting closed out. These guys can be pinched around, and these are pinned down. That's going to be very, very bad for them. Cromwell and... Oh, two Cromwells, excuse me. 
pouring fire into the L6 Panzer. This guy's probably not going to make it out alive, but it's just a guess at the moment. There we go. Fuel explosion. That poor, brave fool goes down. More air power coming in, and it's worth noting that despite the early usage of that Henkel, literally about five seconds into the game, we aren't seeing anything else coming out from the German player. What's more, not entirely sure why he dropped smoke down there. I mean, thinking about it, the forests are deep enough in the, that it's not going to give you a lot of a benefit. Look at that. These guys aren't seeing anything, and they're not even being smoked out. Um, but lots and lots of air power coming on in. Hurricane's coming after this Henkel. The Henkel has not even managed... No, he, got, he took out that half-track, so that's a, that's a positive bonus right there. But he's probably going to pay for it with his life. He's got two Hurricanes after him already, and a third one coming in and around. So, yep, there he goes. That brave air crew has now fallen. Uh, now we're going to see a true French tank coming on in, although I, for the life of me, I cannot tell you what the full name is. The Char M5A1, I think, is a slight derivation on the Stuart. Though I'm sure Williams might be able to correct me. Williams, by the way, has been ignoring the channel, mostly because he's had no internet. So for all you history files out there, he will be coming back as soon as he gets his internet back up. Uh, and we wish him a speedy recovery on that one. Tone back this air, uh, excuse me, the sound a little bit more, as this steward is just pouring incredible amounts of firepower in after these uh, Panzer Abfeas. Um, and we're going to see a very, very slow push out of these B2s. Take a quick look at the stats in this B2. So he's got seven armor piercing, which is much better than I thought it was going to be. Um, I frankly don't use the 716th that much because I do like having armored vehicles. But regardless, this was considered to be, I guess, a heavier tank, if, I mean, as far as lights go, but still very obsolete. You can tell B2 is a French tank already. And a 47 millimeter cannon, so it's practically nothing. Um, it is enough to encourage this Cromwell to back away. Uh, and the Stuart is just as eager to fall back as well. But it has allowed the Germans to move on up and potentially take this position in, not so much this town, but just a small hamlet going on here. Now, captured Bren carrier, on top of this 202, this coming out again of the Munsters, um, third Falschmägers. Falschmägers don't have a whole lot of true viable armored vehicles. That L6 pans are doing a lot more than he really could have been doing either way. Let's get back into now it's phase B. So we're seeing an M8 coming on out in favor over here for uh, Hicksaw's French. Followed up by more uh, M5s. And do we actually have any other AT platforms? No, we don't. But these Jaegers up here do pick off that char that kind of charged on in. And now how about the poles? Poles are bringing in an Achilles tank. Trying to back things up a little bit. Our Arcadian 716th is holding strong. They have their massive, massive infantry cannons. Uh, what is it, 1,200 meter range? 1,600 meters. So, you know, a mile distant. They can just throw rounds down, not with uncanny accuracy, but with enough accuracy to really make you kind of terrified. Unfortunately, the Falschmägers over here to the German right do get picked off. Now... MG-34 is going to get taken out pretty quickly. There it goes. 202 might get picked off as well from this char tank. Especially if it continues to retreat down the road. Not going to make it out too easily. And this flat gun 30, uh, excuse me, 20 millimeter is not going to be enough to, to delay him either. Worth noting, we are seeing a couple munitions track coming on in. Uh, looks like it's for basically that 81 millimeter. And I'm wondering, where the heck is more air power from the Falschmägers? I feel like, despite being a fairly paratroop-heavy division, well, instead, an airborne division overall, we're not seeing that kind of deployment of air assets that we would have usually seen otherwise. Now, from the 716th, we are seeing a Werf Raumann. And so help me God, I used to know what that actually would mean. I think Raumann is something to do with smoking. So I might be wrong, but um, think about a Nebel Werf with just four rockets. It's a four-pack. 280 millimeters. So it's an incredible, incredible amount of damage potential, assuming it hits, of course. Uh, worth noting as well, it's at 1,300 meters. The AOE is quite devastating. Um, but once again, we're seeing a very questionable usage of this smoke. And I'm wondering if you're just bringing him in just so that way he can just... I, I, actually, I really don't know. I don't know why he's bringing that in. Uh, the M8 and the Char M5 have been cut on off. And this pack gun looks like he's trying to slide on force to get after them, but I don't think that he sees his particular victims just yet. Now, this infantry pops on out, he will, and we'll get a great shot into him. Stop, my friend, stop! 
and Mace falling back as well. So if maybe we can get these Fur um, Flush Omega Furas on top of them, I was going to call them Penzer Jaegers. Um, that would be completely incorrect. Now, these Jaegers have gone and nuked the one tank that's gone. So now the French are sagging slightly, but bringing in a command tank, the M4A2 Sherman, basically. They should be in good stead. Let's flip this around a little bit just to kind of switch things up. So looking from the German side, more infantry being poured in by the 716th, and this is exactly what they do. Um, though they don't really get a massive supply bonus as the game moves forward, only gaining 20 over uh, the course of two phases, their lack of truly, truly expensive units does allow them some rather good reinforcement potential. However, uh, when their opponents are packing a lot of air cover, and indeed even this hurricane's coming back in, he's going to be pushed away for the time being, but he's also taken out a truck. So, yep, that was two bombs. It took out a very necessary truck, I would think, for the German war machine. Hurricanes flying combat air patrol in the meantime, and there's still very few in the way of German aeroplanes. We are finally going to see Munster deploying um, an ME-109, but, you know, not really the most vital of units at the moment. Uh, another ME-109 coming in after the... Who's my what's it? Can't think what it's called. Um... I'll get back to that in a second. And the other ME-109 ground attack, though, it does take out the anti-air platform, so that's a good solid hit right there, but he does pay for it, so limited utility in the long run. Uh, with the other ME-109, excuse me, um, the one that was on combat air patrol was going after those hurricanes, but um, while it was able to drive away one, it doesn't... It's not able to really kind of capitalize on that at all. But regardless, the Germans continue to be in a primary position here, 51 to 49... Although we are starting to see sappers being called on in by the French, as well as just some more machine guns basically pushed on in. That was quick. Uh, the Panzer L6 continues to rack up some kills here and there, though this might be a second one, and this might be the first one. I could not tell you. I think one of them probably has gone down in the meantime, if for no other reason than because of units like this M4A2. See, bailout right there. One shot. One kill, Domo Arigato. And we are back to a 50-50 with that. Uh, the M8, I don't know if this is the same M8 that was able to sneak back away. I don't think I saw a surrender on that. And if he hadn't, that was a giant, giant miss opportunity from the German side of things to take out that um, recon ability. Have quite the interesting armored core coming on through here. Stewart, a couple of Cromwells, it looks like. Yep, Cromwell, Cromwell, and Achilles. Um, so the Poles might be gearing themselves up for a big, big push. And frankly, considering how um, the 716th kind of ends up falling off as the game continues further and further, <laughs> it just seems like a great option to kind of just dive in again. I feel like neither, set of, neither side is using this kind of open area really with any kind of advantage. I think it's quite a shame, too. Can I, can, I can see it really piercing the front lines and just destroying everything. Aha. A foyer strong pioneers um, coming on in, spitting out some firepower there, literally, and encouraging that one French unit immediately to surrender. In the meantime, Pack 38 does put a couple of shots in after this half track, and this guy's got a pretty heavy machine gun. So the question is, can he take one more round? Falling back. I don't think he's gonna make it out alive though. We got one another round easily coming on in. No, 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 no. Despite the fact that he's on the road, he's just still dipping and diving and ducking. It's like watching dodgeball. Never mind, there we go. Just as you think he might escape, he goes down. Just like those um Mega Furos, though, too. Meantime, both of these cannons are still up and running. I'm surprised neither one of them is firing. I'm still actually kind of surprised that we also continue to see sextons over here from the poles. And these guys have been doing some really good job just putting down almost indiscriminate firepower. Now, a quick history lesson while we're kind of just watching both sides throw rounds at each other from a great distance. Um, the armored vehicles of the Allies kind of afraid to push on in. Worth noting for just as we get before with the history lesson, 5149 in favor of the Allies. They're beginning to slowly dig their way out of the hole in which they find themselves. Pack 38 going down over here on the German right. Um, the 716th wasn't formed really of a lot of Germans. It's basically a lot of the sick, the wounded, the infirm, the old, the young. This was one of those scratch divisions that was kind of tossed together from the remnants of so many other pieces. 
of the German war machine. And I really like this game kind of brings that in. First of all, Ostruppen, um, those Eastern kind of less than completely and totally effective units uh, from the German allies, as well as Italian Freewillige, uh, Freewillige, uh, free will troops, supposedly. Um, these men as well were taken from shattered Italian divisions and just kind of pushed into the 716th. But all right, let's get back to this for a second. We did see a bunch of air power on the minimap as the Allied warplanes just continue to scour the skies. And I'm really, really concerned that the Falschemager detachment over here is just not going to be able to stand up even as the later game French vehicles come in. Yes, they have the Pac-41, and it's in an okay position, not ideal. I would like to see it a little bit more far advanced. Um, but that's, I don't think it's going to happen. They, at this point, the battle lines are fairly drawn. But Arcadian says, here comes an attack beacon, and I can kind of understand that. Uh, he really could be pushing forward, pinching off around, and taking things out. We also start... Is that... Smoke? Oh, no, he's just dropping the beacon, that's why. I was like, is there an artillery strike I'm not seeing? Uh, in the meantime, over here on the right side okay i think he's i think he's calling for a cauldron battle here i might be wrong me 109 is coming on in ground attack is he going after that char yes he is so rockets away my friend and stresses him out but he apparently pulls his shot and drops it just shy of where he needs it to go in the meantime hurricane sliding on in and this guy does have 20 millimeter cannons four of them 500 rounds of, uh total and those things are just gonna be terrifying uh strong pioneers going to be able to stress out, I think, this half-track. No, they're not. Never mind. It's allowing, actually, this Char M5 to pour machine gun fire into them. This guy does have HE ammunition. It doesn't seem to be using it very often. Um, half-track saddling around. I don't know if he's just trying to be a pain or what the deal is, but Pioneer's coming on in. These guys have Gebota Leitungs. Um, might be able to take it out. Let's get nice and close for a second. 100 meters. Look at a beastly throw, if you could actually do it. I don't think it's going to happen, though. No, and I think I think that's the end of that Pioneer kind of push. Now, this flat can, a 20mm, is pouring rounds into him. And in theory, he could be able to take him out. There we mind. There we go. The Hankel comes on in, fires four rounds, and takes him out. In the meantime, we are going to see the poles pushing up the right-hand side. Half-track, as well as flamethrowers uh, on top of the sappers. Uh, it's just some rifleman shifting on in as well. The question is, can this particular bad boy lock them down? And I don't know the answer to that particular question. Also, forgive me, folks. I did miss the Werf Raumann uh, doing its barrage, I believe. Um, but with luck, we might see another one coming on in. For right now, we are continuing to see the Allies really starting to build a critical mass. I'm not so much sure of armored vehicles, although for the poles, dear god, look how many armored vehicles we have right here. Stuart two Cromwells and that Achilles are still hanging on out, and all these sextons able just to pour fire from such, such a great, great distance. But I guess the 716th um, Pac-37, the 47, okay, 47 millimeter cannon is practically nothing by the time that this fight really starts to get, take place here. Um, we are now actually in phase C, forgive me for not calling that one out. Uh, we are about a minute or more into it already, with the French throwing in three more squads of infantry, as well as this Mustang kind of flying on overhead, just some air patrol, kind of keep an eye on things. I am a little disappointed this Henkel has not been called back in to, you know, pelt this char, pelt the M8 even. Oof, never mind, Pack 41 of the 88mm, just as one shot, one kill on that poor guy does go down. Now, the interesting thing about the 88mm is that, once again, it was never intended to be an anti-armor platform. That was only after Rommel did his whole famous experiment in the desert um, that the Germans really were like, bro, we really should do this, and started pouring fire into them. Another ground attack coming on in. I think he's going to be going after the char? No, he's not. Why is he going after the half-track? That seems like such a silly, billy idea. In the meantime, the L6 Panzer does go and take out another half-track, shifting on forwards. And now Round is coming in after that aircraft, but I don't think the 88mm is going to be able to take it out by itself. Shockingly, it doesn't even 
stress it out that much. Now, it'd be fun for me to see the bombs drop and the smoke allowing a corridor to just kind of charge through. But the French aren't taking advantage of that, which is kind of a shame. Let's turn over here to the pole side of thing, though. We are going to see... What's that? Oh my gosh, yes. So, lots and lots of firepower coming on out. Smoke rounds. Is this preparing for a Polish push? The initial thing to say to that is I actually have no idea because right now they're just pouring down round, uh, rounds like crazy. Okay. All right. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. They're trying to smoke off the 47 mil. And despite the fact that there is this pack 41... There is also this lovely, lovely tree cover, which allows the tanks, I think, a, a moderately safe zone here. And geez, they're out of range, it looks like, anyway, so no problem there. Lots and lots of hurricanes coming on in. Okay, so the first one is forced to fall back, but here comes another one. 288 millimeters, though. One point fire at the hurricane, one shooting over at the hurricane. And I'm feeling like the Germans are going to lose this one because they're not being aggressive at all with the air power. And in fact, they've barely even used the air power. Um, though now we are going to see some mortar fire coming on in to pin down this French push that was kind of right up this main arterial. And again, this thing is a cauldron of death. You cannot charge up this sort of area here. This is a bad idea. He's lucky that this drum pioneer was aggressive and went after the half tracks instead of sliding on in and going after these four sections of infantry. Poor guy's gonna get pinned down any second now. There we go, pinned down. So the German position, which looked could have been very, very good, decided in and around to pick up, is not going to be happening. And indeed, now we are coming up. Okay, so the pack went down over here on the German left, and a TOT barrage being called on in. That is might be it might be enough. Maybe not though. Yikes. Um. Oof. Getting harder and harder to be part of the Wehrmacht here. Meanwhile, half tracks are diving on through to this area. Luckily enough for the Germans, there's no infantry on these half tracks. And a couple of Stukes coming in might. Eh, it's not going to turn the tide. These mortars are pretty much toast, I feel. Oof. More fuel explosion on one. Machine gun fire can take out that mortar. And let's see if we just can't. Okay, so here comes the TOT barrage. Let's get focused on that instead. Pinned down, a lot of fire coming in. 380 millimeter cannon being barraged at that field. That should be the higher intensity one as well. Um, problem with that is that it has to achieve a direct hit to really do a lot of damage. And right now, while it's encouraged the um, allied armor over here to the right hand side to fall back, it's not enough to truly tip the balance of the battlefield. As you can see right now, 55 to 45. The Poles and the French have just started to just relentlessly chew their way into things. However, we are going to see a Junker bombing run, and geez, that was that was decent. That was pretty good, actually. I mean, 109, not quite able to get its rounds off. Other char getting a, a little bit of a hit there, but not that much. This Cuba munitions truck is completely and totally Winchester of any munitions. Alrighty, in the meantime, okay, so the Pack 43 is up and running, and this guy was that dedicated, dedicated killer. That thing is huge. Now, luckily enough for the uh, poles over here on the right hand side, that range, 1200 meters, doesn't quite extend as far as you might want it to. Um, and indeed, with that material falling on back, very, very lucky indeed. Flop has a B2 coming on in, but I don't know if that's going to be able to break the deadlock. Again, there's so much allied armor over here. It's just it's, It just feels insane. Uh, but at long last, we are seeing that the French have pushed up on the left-hand side, bringing in a 57mm cannon. Uh, if nothing else, then just kind of hold the area, preventing this L6 moving on in. Now, the Foyer Storm Pioneers might be able to push forwards and put pressure on it. But there's also this Bofors, and this Bofors, even though it can't see a whole lot, could just easily slide on over and take out those brave, brave Strom Pioneers. Sappers, in the meantime, getting pushed back. Okay, we have another TOT barrage coming in, but this time for the Poles. And with a Sexton just continuing to pour fire from range, um, this entire area is going to get roasted and toasted in about a second and a half. 
tons of crom excuse me of hurricanes coming after that poor me 109 and taking him on out and i kind of want to see what happens here does his entire force get blown to pieces will the germans survive tune in in five seconds as this artillery barrage comes on down boom bada boom 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 no not quite that much certainly some stress but a lot less beefy than i thought half track going down to the 88 millimeter Kind of a big deal at this point. Or not really a big deal at this point. More just makes you kind of laugh. Uh, but we are having a bunch of flamethrowers coming on in. And if these guys were able to legitimately pressure back all this infantry, that could be a great opportunity to take out the 716th material right there. But we have about just over 12 minutes left. Excuse me, just under 12 minutes left in this game. One sapper squad is not being pushed in at all. Not able to push in at all. With one... Of the Austrian squad's going down. Another one's already disheartened. He's going to take tons and tons of damage if he's not careful. And yes, I dare say that the Allies have consolidated the position enough that I don't think the Germans can take this one back. Verfrommen? Yes, we do. There we go. Uh, so another one of these coming on in. But there's so much air power here. What? Mustangs, Hurricanes, ground attack Hurricanes. And indeed, what's he going after now? Okay, he's going after the IG. So interestingly enough another TOT barrage being called on in, and that ISG goes out. The 88mm is completely and totally suppressed and pinned. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all she wrote, guys. Unless the Germans mount some sort of miracle counterattack, it's not going to happen. Ah, and that is just always such a shame. I mean, 109 coming on in. He's got those anti-tank rockets. Question is, where's he going? He's going after the deep, deep sextons, but he's not going to be able to get close enough. Neither will I think, will this Junker. Yes, he's got some cannons going down. Oh, wait, no, he's got it. He got it. Question is, will it do enough damage? No, he stresses him out, but he doesn't. He actually stresses out two of these sextons. But there's enough religion in this area, my friends. There's still two more, and they have tons and tons of ammunition. Thank you so much to these Bedford trucks. Now, where was all the armor that we saw before? Okay, so the Achilles are still here, and Cromwell and the like is deploying over here on the eastern side of things. Um, and now Barrage is being dropped back and forth. Uh, Arcadian trying to drop one on top of the approaching poles. Um, but I don't think it's really going to do a whole lot. Worth noting in the meantime as well that... Uh, oh my gosh, which one is he here? So, Ku, 25-21... Only to see these strokes coming on in. He has no idea what really is back there. He just knows there's a ton of stuff. And indeed, I kind of wonder if he knew how much is right here, if he would continue to pressure that area. I'm not sure this is a really good call in terms of using that as a barrage. I think it's kind of a bit of a waste. Uh, but TUT barrage coming down from Arcadian, pinning down a couple of these troops, but there is still sappers charging in, two squads of them. And these, uh, Freiwillige troops are going to get wrecked. Sextons dropping down so much artillery fire, you'd think it was, you know, the 1812 Overture all over the place. Although we are seeing both sapper squads are pinned. Junker 88S making another gun run. Question is, will he get it off? Yes, he does. Okay, but there's so much air power coming in after him, I don't think he's going to make it out alive. And... He does manage to destroy two munitions trucks, so that's a, a small victory, but one nonetheless, I would guess. Um, we are back actually to a 50-50, so folks, I might have miscalled it. I mean, we're looking at it right now. Munster should be rolling in terms of airplanes. He should be rolling in terms of supply. He's now the most um, supported unit on the entire map. It's not happening. And indeed, we just see the two the excuse me. Yeah, two hundred eighty millimeters? Yes. The two hundred eighty millimeter rockets going on out. Still coming out the main line, Hurricane making a gun and run in with um, rockets. But what's more, they have a firefly here, and that thing by itself is deadly. Anybody who's been along with me for the Company of Heroes ride will tell you that a firefly is a devastating opponent. And as much as I bang on the Allied armor in general, it is still a very noteworthy adversary. Barrage coming on in manages to take out a little bit of infantry, the Bofors as well. But there's been no air power to really take advantage of that. And indeed, right now we're seeing all this Falschmager material just chilling in this forest. Charge, my friends! Take the field if you die, at least die facing the enemy, not hiding behind some trees. 
and indeed more Mustangs swooping on around. This Hurricane's making the run in. Looks like, okay, at this front line against the Freiwilliger. And although the Flak 88mm is probably going to get at least one or two rounds off, not going to be enough, I don't think. And there we go. That blows away another unit. Ah, excuse me. Worth noting in the meantime, though, that there is a ton of anti-airbag here. So 20 millimeters uh, mounted on all of those guys. Also kind of curious why we're not seeing a little more aggressive half-track um, attacks here. Germans, in the meantime, starting to lose their artillery. Sexton's finally finding them out. And this poor guy, he's not throwing anything down. This guy, he's completely Winchester munitions, and we're not seeing any other munitions trucks being called on in. I think they might be dead. Ah, oh, yay, yay. Strug, in the meantime, minus his, his partner, I believe, is one of those burning hulks in the field. He's going to come under fire from this Cromwell, as well as this Firefly. Firefly's going to see him for at least one more round. There we go. Ammo explosion. He goes down. And that is just too darn bad. But all right. In the meantime, left side over here, the Gruppe Spahis coming out from the French, pushing in after the Sturm Pioneers. And with a little bit of love and attention, they might be able to actually take out this squad and move in around the German right. In the meantime, uh, well, there's just so much infantry over here, it's not even funny, but there's so much artillery coming in, it's also actually kind of sad. So the Hinkle making a couple of runs, but not doing a whole lot. In fact, he still has all of his cannon ammo. I'm a little bit surprised by that. And that 88 millimeters being forced back as well. So all this material now, the poles shifting on forwards. And with the Achilles backing up both the Stuart and the Cromwell, that should be enough to really pierce the position. And indeed, this half track sliding on up is a good idea as well. Able to put pressure in. And finally, we're seeing some ground attack here, but is it really doing enough? As of right now, I say no. Five minutes left to go, and the Axis are down 300 tickets. 400 tickets, excuse me. I can do math. Um, Spitfire coming after the ME-109s. In fact, a whole Spitfire of Spitfires. Just spitting everywhere. Making gun runs at the Stu, but the Stu... I mean, it's, it's an assault gun, pure and simple. And it's got good, decent stats for what it is. But, yeah, I wouldn't think wasting runs on it from this air power would really make sense. If anything, use the air power to strafe all the German infantry. What's really interesting to me right now, first of all, is that this Junker is still able to be effective because those things are ridiculously obsolete. Um, but once more, is seeing how much the Poles have advanced and how little, really, the French have. And here comes a lot of ground fire coming after this Mustang. No one's that's being thrown at this armor charging on in. One goes down. Sexton continues to barrage this area. Let's just rotate this to get a little bit better, a more appreciative perspective here. Another one goes down. Another one's going to be going down. Fuel explosion in the meantime. There goes that Stewart, I think. Yep, Stewart goes down. Thank you so much. The Freiwillige. And... I think a hole is being punched in the German lines. 53 to 47. I think this one has gone out of reach for the Wehrmacht, and it grieves me to say that. The B2 Flampanzer over here has gone down as well. Verfraumann is worthless. He doesn't even do anything at this point. He needs munitions, and there's nothing coming on. And here comes a Junker once again. The question is, where is he making a gun run? Okay, so that's an interesting decision. Bofors is going to put some fire into him. Not that much. And I don't think those bombs are going to do enough to really overly stress them. Yes, we have a couple of falling back, and we have these ME-109s making strafing runs as well, but now we have four airplanes going back the other direction. And really, these, these cannon on these Hurricanes and Mustangs can be making runs like crazy. Instead, just the Sextons can just continue to fire again. That's the power right there. It's the concentration of artillery. Had the Germans been able to completely take this out, whether through the off-map artillery fire or whatever, we could have had a very, very different story over here on the German left. But frankly, this curtain of fire is almost impossible to advance into without any kind of counter-battery fire or using your air assets 
efficiently, especially in the wake of seeing all these bofers. There's nothing you can really do. And the 716th is at a loss, I would say, against more mobile divisions. And maybe not massively more mobile, but still more mobile. It's more mobile. Jaegers, though, are threatening to push forwards. All the Falschmakers are not willing to give on up. They are pinned, they are abused, and they are getting tons and tons of fire being levied at them. But they continue to advance into the teeth of the Allied position. Now, we are also going to be seeing these half tracks trying to sneak on in, drop off a couple of squads of infantry as everything gets stressed on out. And these hurricanes with rockets and bombs could be enough. To pierce? No, we'll probably take out that one squad of Italian troops, and that's about it. Yep, there we go. That's it. I will say I really have been enjoying watching um, Ku 2521's usage of smoke rounds coming up in these sextons. I I don't always use these things. In fact, I rarely use them. I will admit, uh, but he's using them really kind of well to create kind of safe zones for his troops to charge on forwards. And frankly, w ooh, hand to hand combat. And the Ostrupen forced them away, but the Sappers, I think, are just going to put one more bout of flame into that building. And that'll be enough, won't it? Yep, they're retreating. But yes, okay, so that's what hand-to-hand -hand combat looks like. I just, I've literally never seen it. I mean, 109 comes away more or less, I think, unharmed. Spitfire as well. This guy's got a full tank of everything, and he's not really doing a whole lot about it. Being forced back by that 88mm. Uh, but as we go into the close, closing stages of this game, yes, it's going to be an allied victory by at least twice what the uh, Germans do have. And while uh, some of you might be shaking your head saying, you know, we totally expected that, we totally expected that, it's still kind of fun to see these matchups. And I think that's what I'm enjoying the most about this game is that you get to see really, really crazy kind of suggestion opportunities here. Um, a couple of less active divisions throughout the war get to actually shine here. So, well done to the Allied players. The end victory over here looking to be about, ooh, 1375-ish to 672. Let's take a quick look at terms of kills and losses. So, kills, dear God. Cromwell is just doing crazy amounts of work. Taking out tons and tons of these poor 716th troops. Anybody else close to that? The other Cromwell doing decently well. Sexton's doing a lot of damage. Hurricane's even doing damage. This guy with the ground attack hurricane making gun runs like crazy. Sappers, etc., etc. Now, losses. The Flampanzer did pretty well until it got um, countered by the Achilles. And this guy, kind of embarrassingly enough, Hammerschmidt, I'm just watched House of Cards, um, was one of the bigger killers by taking out three. And that's 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 kind of shocking. Uh, looking at kills and losses overall, Ku did a great job uh, in terms of KD. Uh, Hicksov, a little bit less so. Arcadian got bashed, unfortunately. And Munster, well, Munster went about, you know, went about even. But folks, thank you so much for tuning in for this particular game. Been, I love casting these games. I love making me media for you guys. If you're not yet a subscriber, hit that button. I, I know what, we just crossed 1,100 subscribers. Let's get to 1,200. I want to see that soon. It's, it's my birthday soon, guys. I want to, I want to be having you know, a good birthday present here. Um, but I will see you guys all later. This is Con Ulrich signing off. Take it easy, everybody.